Finally, we want to investigate the impact of the fluid flow on the walls of the artery. We can do this using wall shear contours. Select contours in the top bar as before. Name this wall shear contours. In the details pane, change location to wall. Change variable to be wall shear. And change the number of contours to be 101. And again, click apply. In the view pane, return to a single view. In the outline, ensure that only wall shear contours is selected. We can then see the contours in the window. Back in the details pane, under the render tab, uncheck show contour lines and click apply. This makes it easier to see the contour plot on the 3D model. Rotating around it, we can see the wall shear increases near the bifurcation, with the highest value being along the walls just after the path's branch. There is a low value region right before the branch that extends into the bulge where the flow is recirculating. This has important biological implications related to plaque development. While this visualization is useful to determine the wall shear trends, we can get more accurate values using the Fluent Post Processor. This is because CFD Post, the software we are using now, was originally designed for CFX, an older CFD software. It used a vertex center finite volume method, meaning that values of the unknown functions were found at the corners of each cell. Fluent, however, uses a cell centered finite volume method, as discussed in pre analysis, meaning that the primary unknowns are found at the center of each cell. Since CFD Post is using a solution from Fluent, it is interpolating the cell center values to the vertices and then interpolating again to find the values anywhere in the cell. This interpolation leads to a drop in accuracy. Furthermore, calculating wall shear requires using velocity gradients across the domain, which Fluent can do more accurately. We can therefore close CFD post to return to Workbench. Back in Workbench, double-click Solution to reopen Fluent. When Fluent opens, we can create new wall shear contours. Under the Results tab in the top bar, select Contours and click New. In the pop-up window, name this Wall Shear Contours. Change Contours Of to Wall Fluxes.
and make sure wall shear stress is selected. Ensure that only wall is selected in the surfaces list by left clicking on the other options to remove them. Click save slash display to view the contours and we can close this window. In the view, we can see the wall shear contours again. The same trends are visible, but now with more accurate numerical results. Finally, we can investigate the mass flux at our inlet and outlet boundary conditions in Fluent. In the results tab, under reports, select fluxes. In the new window, ensure that mass flow rate is selected. In the boundaries list, select inlet and both outlets. And click compute. The mass flow rate at each boundary is visible in the results list on the right. A positive value indicates that flow is entering the surface, while a negative value indicates that it is leaving the surface. The first important thing to look at is the difference between the values at the two outlets. Outlet 1 has over doubled the mass flow rate of outlet 2. We can see that this matches the expectations from pre-analysis by comparing these values to the inlet value. Secondly, the net results value shows the difference between the mass flow rate coming in and the mass flow rate leaving the flow domain. We can see that this is a very small value, on the order of 10 to the negative 11. This is a good way to ensure that the solution converged. We can now close this window. With this completed, make sure to save your project. If prompted, select Save for Current and Future Calculations to preserve your work.